Hello and welcome to the today's presentation of Image Engineering. Um, we will talk about the challenges that usually arise when testing camera systems, especially of high dynamic range systems um, from the automotive sector. My name is Max Gede. I'm your presenter today. Um, I'm a research and development engineer at Image Engineering, and um, I'm responsible for various development projects, which are mostly related to the automotive environment. So my seven years at Image Engineering, I gained a lot of experience in measuring imaging systems. And uh, a lot of this experience goes back to the time at lab uh, when I was trying to get the maximum out of the available equipment. Um, I mean, the measurement equipment. When working with automotive grade HDR cameras or dynamic range cameras, um, we are often faced with challenges um, and some of them are only can only be solved with the right methods and with the right hardware. So today we will cover a range of the challenges uh, from the most basic um, to some unique, more typical for the automotive sector, like uh, dealing with extremely short exposure times, for example. Let's start by looking at, uh, at an image. Um, so what do we see here? Um, this is an image of a street scene of vehicles, cyclists, pedestrians. Um, there's a road on it, and um, the contrast of this image is quite small. Uh, to be precise, it's exactly zero. Uh, no matter how, how calculated, um, Weber, Mickelson, uh, difference contrast, it is zero. Um, I changed the original image so that the contrast is zero. So we can see that uh, we don't see anything as the amount of information in this image is uh, also zero. It is completely uniform. Um, so we could say contrast allows an imaging system to show an object. Now let's take a look at the image as it came out of the camera system. Um, now that the contrast is no longer zero, it's uh, higher. Object in the image, objects in the image uh, can be detected. Usually when transferring contrasts from the scene to a camera, um, the contrast is not trans transferred to the same extent. Um, as you can see here, for example, um, it is clear to see that some contrast from the scene is lost but uh, in the imaging system, but it is still preserved um, to detect it's still preserved enough so we can detect the cycling lane. Looking at the car on the other hand, on the other side of the image, uh, we can see that there is a major loss of contrast. Uh, it goes to this extent where the whole car is just one uniform plane. Finding out about such issues uh, involves a lot of testing and uh, field testing is a major when not the major cost driver in the development of ADAS systems. So one way to reduce these costs is uh, to move some of the road testing to the lab. And um, here we come to the first challenge of uh, on our way, how to replicate real world contrasts in a lab environment. Okay, let's begin with a uniform light source. In our example, the new Vega light source from Image Engineering, it is a direct current LED light source. And a comparat comparatively small footprint, comparatively small footprint. And uh, sizes often um, are difficult to get across in illustrations. So um, we are speaking of a cube with an edge length of 12 centimeters. So it's pretty small. Um, as you have seen on the front of the image is a uniform target and um, now we can just swap the uniform diffuser for a gray step chart like this one. Um, what you see in the, in this, on the left side is a simple gray wedge. Uh, it is um, equipped with equidistant step sizes, step side patches, um, equidistant in the uh, optical density domain. And this particular layout uh, we use for um, for we use to analyze um, for P2020 image quality factors. Um, 
something like uh, contrast detection probability, CDP, or uh, modulation light mitigation probability, which is MMP. If you're not familiar with MMP, um, I suggest uh, visiting the, uh, sorry, if you're not uh, familiar with P2020, I suggest visiting their website. Uh, I will show a link in the slides. Uh, P2020 is a working group of the IEEE Standard Association, and their main focus lays on the development of an image quality standard, uh, which is meaningful for the automotive industry in this case. So maybe a short example on how a possible measurement could look like to solve our challenge. Um, in the usual case, uh, the camera, just like the light source, can be controlled by a computer. In the best case, even both can be automated together. So the light source, mm, let's take a look at the outputs of both systems. Uh, the light source is our scene in this case. So it is our scene and it's simultaneously the input for our imaging system. Let's take a look what happens with the image if it goes, or if what happens with our input if it goes for the imaging system. Okay, this is exactly why we wanted to test in the first place. Um, even without further investigation, we can see that there are major issues going on here. Um, different uh, systems show different behavior in this case. And we can see there are some um, some different issues we can see here. Uh, for example, on the left side, this example, we see there is an unexpected increase of noise in the top left corner where it gets bright. You would not usually expect it from a single exposure uh, image, something like this, but um, HDR images often introduce such, uh, such behavior or such artifacts. Um, the both examples in the middle and on the right, um, we see there is a, also an increase in noise and there is a really strong reduce in contrast, which we can see here. And loss in contrast may be translated to loss in detection. So let's take a look at our next challenge. It's uh, how to create a vari variety of luminances in a lab. Usually, you just dim your light source, but dimming a light source introduces um, different challenges again. And uh, dimming light sources, for, for example, with tungsten or with LEDs, introduces uh, color shifts. And um, this, is, this is, might become an issue with testing. Um, so, What you can do is with the, with the with Vega, as it is a stabilized uh, light source, and we talk about color shifts later, you can dim your light source without, um, without hesitation, and um, you can achieve a high variety of luminances in your testing. So for example, uh, we can take a look. We can, uh, or Vega light source uh, has a dynamic, um, linear dynamic contrast of 1 million to 1, so it's about 120 dB. And it's just a light source. So if you control your light source and on top you put a target with 20 dB um, uh, dynamic range, you would increase to 140. And you can even create different targets, so customized targets on the, on the Vega uh, and increase the overall dynamic range even more. But looking at this example, we can take samples at lower luminances, we can dim the light source higher and higher and higher, and uh, we can dim the light source without introducing uh, color shifts or any other um, issues. Okay, how to simulate a high scene dynamic range. Um, for some cameras, it is not enough to, to, to capture high contrast between two images to test for issues. It is also interesting to take a look what happens if the camera is introduced to uh, um, a really high dynamic range scene. So um, what we can do here is we just introduce more light sources. 
And um, in the case of Vega, we have a controller which supports up to seven light sources, which can all be controlled individually, but they also can be controlled in small groups and um, uh, or controlled even as one big group with seven light sources. And they can be placed, as they are really small, they can be placed uh, anywhere in your field of view of the camera. So, to go on back to our test, we extend the dynamic range just by extending uh, or multiplying the light sources or introducing multiple light sources. How to measure short exposure times? Um, HDR cameras tend to have extremely short exposure times. Um, from time to time, even moving down to 10 microseconds or even lower. And um, I don't want to go through the math exactly, but um, if you are using a pulse width modulated control light source, you can calculate the effect of the pulse width modulated light source on your image material. And the shorter the exposure time of your camera is, the greater is the impact uh, on, your, on, your, on your image or on your exposure. And this inaccuracy can be calculated with this equation here. And what this equation basically says is uh, um, we want to have a ratio between our brightest exposure and our um, darkest exposure. And the brightest exposure will be with n pulses plus 1, and the brightest exposure will be with n pulses. As you can see in the presentation uh, on the bottom of the slide, this is exactly what happens. From time to time, the worst case is uh, we have one capture where we get five pulses and we have one capture where we get four pulses. And this works for every uh, pulse exposure time configuration. If you map these, uh, uh, these uh, inaccuracies on a map, so on the x-axis we can see the camera exposure time and on the y-axis the worst case inaccuracy, you can see that even uh, that the most interesting area between 10 microseconds and 1000 microseconds is um, strongly affected by PWM light sources. So if using uh, extremely short exposure times and working with HDR cameras, um, the only solution is use DC-driven and not modulated light sources. Challenge five, how to simulate flickering light sources. Now that we got get rid of the flicker in our light source, we want to introduce flicker, but we want to introduce it in a controlled way. Uh, why is it important, uh, you would ask? And uh, here is a good example. I would just slow down a little bit more so we can see. There is a complete loss of information in, in, in many consecutive frames. So the camera is blind in the spot where it needs to see the, uh, the sign. And this is not even the worst example. Um, it, it is thinkable of that a camera might be completely blind when uh, introduced into an environment where a flickering light source is a major light source. And we can reproduce this behavior with our light sources. I have some, some examples. We can see here. Uh, we can introduce flicker to our light source and see the effects and also evaluate the effects afterwards. So the light source is capable of simulating flicker. It's simulating uh, of LED flicker with a wide variety of frequencies, duty cycles, and what's most important, important also phase shifts. Because you're not always sure you will get the phase. You never know which phase you are starting with when testing. And um, yeah, so the frequency range is uh, 1 to 1000 hertz, and uh, we can examine with uh, 1 to 99% UD cycle. Um, very important also is uh, that the uh, Vega 
is capable of simulating sinusoidal flicker. So we can introduce a sinusoidal flicker of a frequency range of 10 to 500 hertz. And for the most experimental approaches, we can also generate a triangle signal with 10 to 500 hertz. So, um, the last of our challenges is uh, height, how to reach high measurement accuracy. And um, the three points I want to, to show you are um, spatial uniformity, temporal stability, and color stability also. I'll come back to you to it later. So if you want to to reduce the influence of light source on your measurement, you have to, to have a most uniform spatial light source. Uh, in the case of the Vega, uh, it is 95% over the whole uh, output window. So going down to, the, to each patch, it is uh, much higher. And uh, the deviation of intensity output when, when warmed up is much less than 1%. Talking about the spectral stability, um, the usually uh, used uh, LEDs are unstabilized and the, oh, let me start, start with this slide again. So usually LEDs uh, show a chromatic shift with changing temperature and um, to encounter this, um, Vega is stabilized and operates in a very small uh, temperature range. And the deviation of the chromaticity is, uh, of Vega is well within 1000 of uh, X prime, Y prime. So thus also uh, solving our challenge of high, uh, high accuracy measurements. So uh, summarizing, Vega is a direct current LED light source. Uh, it has a very high dynamic range, 120 dB only for light source without, uh, without any targets. Uh, speaking of targets, which are customizable um, to increase even, even the dynamic range even further. Um, and it's, uh, it provides a high temporal, spatial and chromatic stability. Uh, it's a very versatile uh, light source with flicker functionality. And so I would like to thank you for uh, uh, listening to me. And um, thank you very much. Uh, on the bottom are the sources for the images. Uh, this is it for me today. Thank you very much. <laughs>